So the exam is going to expect that you know the difference between leading, lagging, and coincident economic indicators. Economic indicators are often categorized based on their timing relative to the business cycle. And these indicators can help economists and policymakers understand where the economy is headed and where it currently stands. We'll start with leading economic indicators. They're useful to make predictions about which way the economy is going. Because leading economic indicators are statistics that change before the economy as a whole changes. Thus, leading indicators are often useful for predicting future economic activity. The stock market is considered a leading indicator because stock prices factor in forward-looking performance. So the stock market can indicate the economy's direction if earnings estimates are accurate. So think of the stock market as a leading indicator. Also inventory levels considered a leading indicator because inventory levels reflect businesses' expectations for future sales. So if inventory levels are rising, it may indicate that businesses expect consumer demand to increase. Conversely, if inventory levels are falling, businesses might be anticipating a slowdown in demand. Building permits are also a leading indicator. Building permits indicate future construction activity because obtaining a permit is one of the first steps in the construction process. All right, let's try this. Stock market returns are considered a leading economic indicator because A, they reflect past economic conditions. No. B, they predict future corporate earnings and investor confidence. Yes. C, they're directly controlled by the government's economic policies. No. D, they represent the historical performance of companies. No. Letter B is correct. Stock market returns are considered a leading economic indicator because they predict future corporate earnings and investor confidence. So if the stock market's suddenly rising every day for a couple of weeks, that's considered an economic indicator leading to future corporate earnings and confidence of investors. And the opposite's true. If the stock market's doing terribly for several weeks, that's often looked upon as being a leading indicator of a bad economy. So the stock market, leading economic indicator, usually six months ahead of where the economy will be. Another leading indicator is the yield curve on government bonds. Here's a visual representation of a normal upward sloping yield curve. Why is it upward sloping? What does that suggest? Well, think about bonds as an investment. You're loaning money to the government and you're gonna get a rate of return for the use of your money and you have to wait a certain number of years to get your principal back. Well, if you're only gonna wait five years to get paid back, you might be okay with a 2% return. But if you have to wait 30 years to get paid back, you're likely to demand a much higher rate of return for waiting 30 years to get your money back versus waiting five years. Remember bonds as an investment, there's no growth. All you're gonna get is your income and your principal back at the end. So normally the longer you have to wait to get your principal back, the higher the expected return. And that's what's shown here on a normal upward sloping yield curve. The exam will expect you to know that the yield or interest rate generally increases with the time to maturity of the bond. That's typical in a healthy growing economy. So as long as you have an upward sloping yield curve, then you expect the economy to be growing. So an upward sloping yield curve would be a leading indicator pointing to growth in the economy. The opposite of that would be an inverted yield curve. The inverted yield curve here is where short-term interest rates are actually higher than long-term rates. This is an unusual situation in the bond market and is considered a significant economic indicator. The inverted yield curve is thought to reflect investors' expectations of a future slowdown in the economy. When investors believe that short-term risks outweigh long-term risks or that the economy will weaken in the near future, investors might opt for the safety of long-term bonds so if everybody's buying long-term bonds, prices go up, but as prices go up, yields come down. Historically, an inverted yield curve has been one of the most reliable indicators of an impending recession. So if you see this inverted yield curve on the exam and they ask you which way do investors think the economy's going, this is pointing to a near-term recession. So what's inverted about this yield curve? Well, if you go out five years as a bond investor, you're gonna get a 2% return. But if you go out 30 years where you were getting a 4% return in the other yield curve, now you're only getting a 1% return. That's the inverted curve. 
where the short-term rates are actually higher than the long-term rates. And that's because investors are more fearful of short-term issues in the economy and they're feeling more safe about longer term. All right, how about this? An upward sloping yield curve generally suggests what? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need help with any part of the CPA exam, go to i75cpareview.com. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, where the right teacher makes all the difference.